Hello everyone, welcome to Top 10 Character Moments. Today we're breaking down my picks for the 10 best wrestling moments of Bray Wyatt. At the time this video goes up, it will have been about a week since the tragic loss of Bray Wyatt. And as someone who considers himself to be a huge fan of professional wrestling, and someone who grew up watching this man, I thought the best thing that I could do to honor him, and for all he's done in the wrestling business, is to give him his own video. So today we're going to talk about the greatest moments of Bray Wyatt. And just remember, this is my personal list, so you don't have to agree with it, but I ask you respect my opinions as I will respect yours. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and if you already have, tell your friends, family, neighbors, let them know that this channel is the place to be. I also have another YouTube channel called Sector for Nerds. If you guys could subscribe over there as well, it would be greatly appreciated. So before before we get into the top 10 list itself, let's get into some honorable mentions. First up, winning the tag team titles with Randy Orton. This was during the whole storyline between Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Randy Orton ends up joining the Wyatt family because in his mind, if you can't beat him, join him. And together, he and Bray Wyatt were able to win the tag team titles. I think that was Bray Wyatt's first championship victory in WWE as well, if I'm not mistaken. And to do it with the likes of someone like Randy Orton, that's pretty cool. Next up, attacking Xavier Woods at the compound. This was during the Wyatt Family New Day storyline back in, I want to say like 2016, and they just, there was this whole thing like Xavier Woods getting so like scared and like, oh no, the Wyatt Family, they're going to destroy us, and Wyatt would play off of that. And I just remember there being this moment where like, Woods is just walking out there alone in the dark and then Bray Wyatt comes from out of nowhere and just like ambushes him. It was like, oh my gosh. And for one more honorable mention, hugging Jeff Hardy, aka Brother Nero. I loved the pairing of Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt together. Like that to me was so incredible. And they just do like this random backstage segment on Raw where Matt talks with his brother and then Bray Wyatt comes up and he's like, Brother Nero, and he hugs him. It was just like, yeah. All right, so now that we've gotten through some honorable mentions, let's get into the top 10 list itself. You guys ready? Here we go. At number 10, his debut on the main roster. Honestly, the best part about this is Bray Wyatt really did little to nothing in this debut except stand there. And you just knew he had this presence about him. Their target was Kane. And it wasn't Bray that attacked him. It was his buddies, you know, his family members, Harper and Rowan. And all Bray Wyatt had to do was just stand there and just be that cult leader character that he was at that time. He really wasn't getting his hands dirty much in the beginning days of his career unless he had to. Or unless he just felt like giving someone a sister Abigail, you know what I'm saying? At number nine, singing He's Got the Whole World in his hands with children. This is like a crazy segment that they did once in WWE where he was in a feud with John Cena. Looking back on it, like even before his death, he still should have probably beat Cena at Mania. But of course it's John Cena and John Cena always wins, LOL. But that segment that they did where Bray Wyatt like possessed all the children and it was such like a genius thing. Like we hear all the time in WWE like, oh, it's mind games and people playing mind games, but like, this was actually done effectively. It's like, what's the best way of getting into Cena's head? By converting the people that are on his side the most, and that's the children. That was the whole thing. Children love John Cena. All the men always chant, Cena sucks. All the women and children chant, let's go Cena. And for Cena, it's like, man, what do I, what do, I do here? At number eight, helping Matt Hardy. This was the start to their tag team feud where Bray Wyatt helped Matt Hardy win a battle royal. I think it was like the Andre battle royal at WrestleMania, right? And just them two together and them hugging at the end was so cool, man. Like I was, I was so behind this tag team that they were gonna do between Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. And eventually they do become the tag team champions. At number seven, his return at Extreme Rules 2022. Now I'll admit, this isn't something that I watched live because I haven't really watched much live WWE in years now. But when the clip started rolling around about, oh my gosh, Bray Wyatt's coming back. I'm like, all right, well, what's this gonna be? I gotta see this. And I watched it, I'm like, Okay, this is pretty cool. And then you start thinking about like, oh boy, like how are how are they gonna mess this up or you know, whatever, but it just in that moment, 
it was like, wow, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. At number six, his return promo. So this happened about a week after the Extreme Rules event. And I don't know, maybe people didn't like this as much as I did, but there was something just so, what's the word I'm looking for? Genuine, I believe. There was something that was so genuine about this promo and him being like, look, you guys have been so important to me. You guys have been there for me in my lowest points. I've heard people on the streets like, when are you coming back, Bray? When are you coming back? Your, your words inspired me. And it felt like half the promo, he was on the, the verge of tears. And of course, you know, him kind of referencing Brody and his death as well, because him and Brody were good friends. But yeah, just that return promo in isolation, I thought was incredible. At number five, defeating The Shield. I think this one will be on everybody's list of favorite Bray Wyatt moments because this match was so incredible, especially like at the time it was in. I was watching WWE at that time, but I know there were a lot of people that were very fed up with it back then. But one thing that I think everybody enjoyed were the Shield and the Wyatt family. And to put those two factions against each other, two factions that up until that point had just been so dominant, it was the coolest thing. At number four, becoming the WWE Champion. Say what you will about the run itself, it may have been a transitional reign for Randy Orton, but I'm taking it out of the picture for a second, all right? So put that to the side, boom, non-factor. Him being able to say that he won the championship and doing it in an elimination chamber with five other men, pinning both John Cena and AJ Styles, two of the top guys, that's rather impressive. Coming out of that chamber match, Bray looked so dominant. And just seeing him holding the championship, it's like, wow, he did it. At number three, the Firefly Funhouse. Now we're really getting into like some of my absolute favorite parts of Bray Wyatt. And a lot of it is the Mr. Rogers slash Fiend character. It's hard to pick out one Firefly Funhouse segment that stands out the most to me, but if I had to just like think of a couple off the top of my head, I think of the, the Muscle Man Dance episode being a very funny episode. The first episode of the Firefly Funhouse is always one that stands out to me. It's just like you look at all of the characters in there, like the Rambling Rabbit, the Huskus the Pig, Abby the Witch, like all of them have some sort of connection to Bray. It's like these segments were so well thought out and like better than anything going on in WWE at the time. And this was also during a time where I was pretty much like not watching WWE on a weekly basis anymore. But you know what I was going out of my way to watch every single week was the Firefly Funhouse segments. There was just something about them and the way that Bray had worked these promos and stories that just had me hooked. And that's the magic of Bray. At number two, speaking of the Firefly Funhouse, the Firefly Funhouse match with John Cena. This was by far the best thing to come out of the pandemic era of wrestling. It's one of those things where I don't know how to describe it to somebody. In a weird way, it kind of buried John Cena, even though it's kind of impossible to bury John Cena at this point because it's John Cena. But like, this was like Bray Wyatt just destroying Cena physically, mentally, just like I said, it's hard to describe. If you haven't seen it before, I highly recommend you go out of your way to watch it. And then probably my favorite Bray Wyatt moment at number one, the Fiend SummerSlam entrance. This for me was by far the coolest Bray Wyatt thing. I loved the Fiend so much. At a time when AEW was about to become a thing and my passion for pro wrestling was reignited thanks to AEW. And I remember sitting there after watching the Fiend SummerSlam match, like the entrance, him destroying Finn Balor, all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm still excited for AEW. AEW has brought my passion back for wrestling, but this Bray Wyatt Fiend character is the coolest thing in wrestling right now. Isn't that just crazy to think about? Now, if only they would have stayed that way and it not been ruined a month or two later with the Hell in a Cell thing, but that's just a whole nother subject for another time. I'm trying not to harp too much on the negatives here. In isolation, in that moment, you can say what you will about the Fiend booking, you can say what you will about the matches, all this other stuff, but that entrance, that debut of him at SummerSlam, was to me far and beyond the best Bray Wyatt thing I've ever seen. 
I just remember watching it with like this like crazy smile on my face like oh my gosh like the music the the lantern with the head of Bray Wyatt obviously the fiend mask and everything the gloves that say hurt and heal on it and everyone in that arena after that entrance was done was just like holy crap what did we just see and I just remember after that I'm like I'm I'm rooting for the fiend <laughs> I kind of already was before, but like, I love Finn Balor too. Like Finn Balor was one of my favorite wrestlers. And then, you know, WWE decide to not make him all that he could be. But again, try not to harp on the negatives. I just remember sitting there like, go Fiend. And like that head crank that he did was like the most vicious head crank of all time. I legit was like, oh my God, he killed him. So there you have it guys. That is my list for the top 10 Bray Wyatt moments. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite moments of Bray are, share your stories. If anybody uh, in the comments has actually met Bray Wyatt and has like a, a story that they wanna share there, please do. I want this to be like a space for people to come together and be able to mourn or, you know, share stories, do whatever they have to do. It feels like the wrestling world has come together because of this tragedy. It just kind of sucks that like, this is what brought the fans together instead of like, oh my gosh, AEW and WWE just both had incredible ticket sales for their shows, but all it seems like anyone wants to do is just bicker back and forth about who's doing it better or who's doing it more and blah, blah, blah. So this is my advice to the wrestling community. Whether you're a fan of AEW, whether you're a fan of WWE, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, one thing that we can say that we have in common is that we love professional wrestling. So I encourage the fans to please keep this community together. Don't don't let it be a case of, well, we only come together when something tragic happens. Let's be there for both the good times and the bad. Thank you all so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.